a keyboard player left for personal reasons. Jesse uh, went like Luby. Jesse Hunter wanted to become a Buddhist monk. My career change was going from sound mind to empty mind. I don't know, I think we all kind of kind of expected it, but didn't. You know? I was happy for him because I thought he was kind of, you know, getting the press and, you know, I think he found something he really loves to do and that's great. I think it's a, it's a really good decision, even if he comes back to music someday, which I, I, I know he will. Jesse not being in the band, uh, I felt a little bit more pressure on me musically. The other guys in the band really wanted to get a keyboard player, but I thought that we could really do it. You know, just the four of us, and that's what we ended up doing. And how she broke, yeah, laughing at the killing joke. Oh, yeah. You guys also did a music video. Uh, well, the music video was something through a friend of the band, Joe Conbrook. And scripted out a script for uh, Killing Joke, and put together a budget with Jacobus, Marcus, Proceeded to shoot it in two days at a friend at Jacobus's house and did it for like, you know, I mean, an infinitesimal budget. And it came out great, amazing. And that was the big push for the second half of the band. You know, without Jesse, it was, we were really going to push that and, you know, and get signed through that. As I rise from the seats to greet her, all sewn up, she never looked much and better. Once the video was shot, what happened? The band broke up. <laughs> uh, now who's asking the question? <laughs> it finally came to an end uh, because of um, disagreements as far as copyright. At the time, Jason and Chris both felt that they were doing a, a majority of the writing and Monty and I felt that that wasn't necessarily the case, that everybody shared certain responsibilities. And I guess Monty and Rob were just, they wanted to keep the band together, but we all just weren't seeing eye to eye, really. And it got harder, I think, as, as we aged to let go of our, of, of the tunes that we came in with. We became apathetic after so many years of struggling and banging our heads against the wall. And when it stops becoming about just getting out there and, you know, putting together a good show, then you stop working, and you start working to get signed. I think that's a real dangerous thing. Uh, what do you miss about the band? Playing. I mean, I miss, I still play with them, you know, with Monty and Rob. So that's cool, you know. Playing live. Um, because when you, you see how your music affects people, it's just, it's incredible. You know, I miss just hanging out with everybody. And, you know, I don't really, I don't really have, outside of the band, there were, those were all people that, that I really didn't have those type of people in my life, those, those kind of personalities. So I don't really, I don't miss it. Uh, I, I use it and I, 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 I keep it. Well, the, the funniest story I have about the band is when uh, we just, you know, we got all this money and this interest to go into into uh, A&M Studios, and we're in there, and it's about nine o'clock in the morning. We've got the early shift, and um, Herb Albert owns the studio, and Jesse's, you know, he's got all of his paintings and stuff on the wall, and. Um, Jesse's just in there kind of staring at the paintings and behind Jesse walks up Herb Albert and he says, um, what do you think about these paintings? Jesse goes, well, I wouldn't buy a used car from the guy that painted this stuff. That's the best story I can think of. Just <laughs> I didn't know that. It was, uh, you know, it wasn't even 10 o'clock in the morning and Jesse insulted the owner of a major studio. <laughs> but that didn't affect our chances. No. <laughs> Jesse convinces us to play this rally. You know, the Gulf War rally was sort of, uh, I, I don't know what they were trying to revisit, but you know, we're not talking like Woodstock, or we're not talking you know, the great Vietnam anti-war protests here, we're talking, uh, you know, hey, rally, let's go. You know, we'll grab a burger and go to a rally. So we get there, and we get up on stage, and there, this chant breaks out, uh, 
No blood for oil. No blood for oil. So we're playing. We so oh, this is great. No blood for oil. You know, they're really with us now. So we strike up and playing this song called Third World America, which is like this is the exact uh, audience for a song like this. We're playing. We're playing. We're playing. And you know, it's like we're getting louder. Everybody's into it. The audience is grooving. And all of a sudden, like the power cuts off. And all we hear is, no blood for oil, no blood. And I look back, and I'm like, uh, I see the, the, the techie. And he's over, like, knocking on the, uh, the generator. And I'm like, what's wrong? And he says, uh, well, we're all out of gas. So it's like, no blood for oil. And they, of course, run out of gas. And that's sort of the sound of my experience. I my home. 